This video takes an in-depth look at the mechanics of handsaw design and provides details about proper use that you won't find in any professional arborist videos and really don't need to know. This is a pruning saw that's fairly typical of most of those used by arborists. It has very aggressive teeth and a curve to it and it's designed for one-way operation, a pull rather than a push and a pull. For most effective use, the teeth are forced down aggressively into the wood and it's yanked really hard. You don't want to just be gently uh, dulling the tips of the teeth. You want to get a deep bite into the wood. So a quick yank or two will take care of a branch rather quickly. However, if you are pruning rather than removing a tree, you want to be much less aggressive about your final cut and concentrate on minimizing any damage to the remaining bark and cambium. This video is going to be about tree removal. To get the teeth deep into the wood, it is easier to force in a few at a time, rather than all of them. This is where the curvature of the blade comes into play. At the start of a pull, the near teeth will make contact with a branch at a point closer to the handle, rather than directly on top of the branch. At mid-pull, the contact will be closer to the top. At the end of the pull, the teeth will be contacting the far side of the branch. As the blade is pushed back for another pull, little, if any, downward force is exerted on the blade. The movement of the contact from one side of the branch to the other keeps the number of teeth in contact with the wood low, so those few can be forced in. Near the end of a pull, the teeth are far from the user's wrist, so the wrist has to exert more moment to put the same downward force into the teeth. It is the pushing down that can be problematic. If the saw is still being pushed down when the branch is severed, the force acting up against the saw disappears and the saw may swing down. In many situations, particularly when removing small branches from a conifer, the climber's lanyard may be just a short distance below the branch and the saw may contact the lanyard, doing damage to it. If the lanyard has a steel core, the contact may also damage the teeth. So the first guideline is never advance your lanyard too close to a branch you want to cut. Beyond that, there are several techniques that can be helpful to avoid having your saw contact your lanyard. One option is to ease up on the pressure as the cut nears completion. The main drawback to this is that it can double the amount of time taken to cut through a small branch. As a subtler issue, the extra strokes increase the wear on the tips of the teeth. A second option is to use two hands on the saw. Initially, both hands can work together to help force the saw through the But, as you near completion, the second hand can oppose the first saw to limit the swing down. A third option, which works nicely for branches on the side of the trunk rather than in front of the climber, is to complete the cut with some twist included so that the saw moves away from the trunk and the lanyard as the saw swings down. A fourth option, particularly for small branches that are close to your lanyard, is to cut up through the branch, away from your lanyard, lifting it so that your saw doesn't get pinched. A fifth option is to change the saw's orientation from its typical horizontal to a more vertical angle. When this is done, the saw may still move, but it won't move down, it will move forward. 
A sixth option is to make the finishing cut near the base of the saw rather than the tip of the saw. That way the wrist may be locked rather than straining to force the tip of the saw down into the wood. A seventh option which may be a bit tricky is to brace the butt of the saw against the wrist as you complete the cut. That way the, the wrist is limited in how far it can rotate the saw down.